For now, though, let's say hello to one of the big winners from this past weekend. Chris Curtis, there he is, the action man. What's Congrats, up? my man. What's going on? Thank you. Thank you. What a fun weekend, right? Oh, my gosh, yes. It's actually kind of, like, surreal to talk to you because I feel like you're such a presence on Twitter. Like, are you able to not be on Twitter for, like, 20 minutes to do a chat? Is that okay? I've, I have, like, stayed away from Twitter for most of this week. Like, I'm trying to, like, back off of it. I'm like, you know what? I got a problem. So I'm backing away from social media a little bit. Like, You are? I got to stop arguing with random. I have to, man. I got to stop. I, I'm very argumentative by nature. So I'm like, I'm, like, quick to argue. I'm like, all right, man. I'm spending too much energy on this. I feel you. I, I did an hour and 15 minute dissertation of a three minute clip last week. So I get the, uh, the argumentative Ooh. side, <laughs> but, uh, Ooh, uh, yo on, on, in July to that point, just uh, since we're there, I remember retweeting one thing that you posted after the Hermanson fight. I might've gotten 3000 follow-up tweets from you arguing with people. Why did you do that? Why did you subject yourself to that? I was, I wanted to just tell you like, man, stop for your own sanity. Why did you keep going? Yeah, man, because uh, I, I make terrible decisions and like I will argue anything. Like I'm just someone who's always been down to argue anything. And then like after the Jack fight too, like, I wasn't like I was like waiting for a, like, a plane. I was on a plane. I couldn't sleep. So I'm just like angry. I was like, no, nah, I'm like, you know what, man? I, I really got to just stop caring. So like, I've taught myself to just like, you know what? Just don't care, man. Like once you stop caring about random people who don't affect like your pay or your life, it gets easier. You even so, uh, lesson learned. <laughs> you even got into it with Chael P, and I think maybe misunderstood <laughs> what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, he actually just shot me a message, and he told me to text him. And uh, I texted him after that, and I talked to him for a little bit. I got a call from him. I got a call from him, and uh, he was super cool about it. And he uh, kind of like talked me off the crazy. He's the big one. Like you got to just not care. Like you know, this is the fight game. It's gonna go. It's gonna go sideways sometimes. He's the one. Like you got to stop caring about these people. So it did, it definitely helped. How long did it take for you to get over that fight? Because I know that one, you know, that obviously bothered you. Didn't like your performance, and your performance on Saturday spoke for itself. You're you're right back on track. But that one in July, how long did it take for you to get over it? Uh, I'm not mad about it. It's been a while to stop, to stop being mad about it. I'm gonna get over. It. I don't know if it's something really get over. It. I don't really get over things. Like I'm a I'm a guy that holds on to things. So I'm not mad about it. You know, I accept. Like, hey, man, I've lost before. I'll lose again. I'm sure it's a. Uh, one of those things that sucks, especially like the circumstances around it. You gotta learn to, uh, you know, kind of move past it. It's definitely something I'm not over. I want that fight back more than anything. But uh, you know, it's it's you, you gotta learn to like just accept that like sometimes it just doesn't go your way. So for me, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself. So now I'm just like, okay, man, it happened. Like you gotta move forward. We'll catch him again at some point. Uh, you tweeted last week after the Orlando card uh, about Roman Delice. You tweeted this, um, and we're going to show the tweet right here. Told y'all I was petty. Hell of a night, Roman Delice. <laughs> proud to be in your corner. Of course, he beat Jack Hermanson in very impressive fashion. What did you mean by that? Like, did you only corner him because he was fighting Jack Hermanson? No, I would corner him regardless. Roman's a really good friend of mine. It's just, it's it's a running joke. When uh, I said I was going out to uh, Florida to corner Roman because I had experience with the Jack. So, you know, on short notice. Like who better to have than the guy that fought him last and uh, got the full brunt of the surprise? But everybody is like, are you really that petty that you're going to go out to corner him? And I was like, Roman's a friend, and he's a really good friend and a teammate, so yes, I was going to corner him. But yes, it does make the trip, the decision to go easier on a fight, you know, the week before a fight. He's like, it's Jack. I'm like, ah, I got to get this one back. Uh, I always say, man, I'm aggressively American, right? I'm aggressively American. And it's the most American thing I could have done was I lost to someone so I went and found a large Eastern European man to fight the victory, get the victory for me. It's the most American shit I could have done. Not mad. Is it? Is it personal though? Because I feel like you might be the only person on the planet who doesn't like Jack Hermanson. Like, isn't he kind of a sweetheart? No, I love Jack Hermanson. I okay. love Jack Hermanson. So here's the thing: people like you hate. I'm like, no. I always call him stupid, friendly Jack Hermanson. Like, I got a fucking message uh, last night. Some congratulations. I'm like, God damn it! Why are you so friendly? <laughs> really against Jack. <laughs> You can't hate Jack or man. It's like, don't look at hate. He's the nicest guy ever. It just sucks, man, because, like, that's not. I'm not mad at Jack. I'm more angry at myself. It was like the Billy Pass. You're not mad at me. You're mad at your father. Like, I'm mad at myself about uh, just how everything went down, just everything. So, nothing against Jack at all. He's probably one of the nicest dudes in the sport, like, really good guy. I just, for my own sanity, need to go prove to myself, like, hey, man, like, watch. You know, I, I accept that I had an off night. It was fine. There's stuff going into it. From the back of your head, you just kick yourself until you can get it back. Uh, I, I fancy myself somewhat of a Adam Sandler historian. I think that was Big Daddy, the father line. It was, 
It was it was a bad it was, it was big daddy. Okay. You're not mad at me, imagine. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Tremendous. Um so going into Saturday, a little bit heated, more heated on Joaquin's side than your side, but nevertheless, you know, there was something there. Were you considering what happened with Jack at all doubting yourself? Did you feel like confidence was, you were on this run, you stumble against Jack. Did you feel like you needed to like, you know, psych yourself? Like how, how were you feeling mentally going into the Buckley fight? Uh, Saturday, I felt great, man. I was just ready to go. The, uh, but for me at that point, if you're, if you're doubting yourself on Saturday, you've made some terrible decisions leading up to that. Um, you know, you, I don't really get nervous beforehand, like leading up to the fight. Saturday is when it gets real. So that's talked to like, okay, like, oh my God, I'm getting into a fist fight. This is going down. But uh, I, I felt confident. I knew we'd worked on what we had to. I think this camp leading up to it, it did, uh, you know, a big shout out to my team and my coaches because there was a lot of doubt on my part because I'm just like, you know, I don't care what happens. I got, this is like my 40th fight, a pro fight, I think. And you still, after coming off of a, a loss, anybody's going to question, like, am I not as good as I thought I was? Or did I just, met, or, you know, did, were there just, was was it a one-off mess up? It was one of those things in camp, you know, we had a lot of rebuilding to do, uh, just polishing up on things. And, you know, midway through camp, I had, to, I had to accept like, hey, man, like you have the answers, you have the tools, you just had a bad night. But by the time we got to the cage, man, like you, you can ask anybody, there's nobody more excited to be fighting on fight day the day before than me. Everybody's like serious and walking around angry and sad. I'm bouncing around, I'm happy. Nobody enjoys hitting people more than me. Like come fight day. So like by the time we walked in the cage, bro, I'm just like waiting, smiling from ear to ear. Why was it so aggressive on his end? Why was it so personal? Uh, I think it's a combination of he's really trying to build, you know, like he tried, I think it's how I mentioned before, and he's trying to build the fight. Uh, he's got that viral knockout that people won't stop talking about. So for him, you know, like you've got to, it becomes an issue of your own success. Like you had this moment early in your career that's so storied. And now you have to keep trying to push the envelope to keep the keep the uh, interest on you. Mm. So if he doesn't do something crazy, then no one's going to care, right? Like we've already, you know, we've had our huge dopamine hit from the uh, those spinning wheel kick thing of doom. So you got to keep building, keep building, keep building. I think a part of it's him selling the fight. And I think a part of it, man, uh, you know, it's just, he, he's got to keep, I think he's trying to, he, he convinces himself that you don't, you know, that like, you know, he, he's the dog in there. You don't want to be in there with him. And I feel like it's just what he does, man. Some guys have to do that. Like, you know, when I was younger, like, and I had 20 fights, I used to, you know, I kind of felt the same way. I had to convince myself, psych myself up, psych the other guy out. At 40 fights now, I'm just like, bro, I don't care. <laughs> like, I am like, literally clocking in and doing what I like. But uh, he's convincing himself, man, it happens. Everybody's a little bit different. And, and, and for the record, how many sparring sessions did you have with him? He was here for a month. We just sparred a few times, I think. Okay. Like, yeah. And how similar was he in sparring to the guy that you fought on Saturday? Oh, uh, very similar, man. He's just like, he's walking, Buckley, walking, Buckley, man. He's super fast, super talented, super technical. Well, not too much. He's super just like explosive. He's an athlete, man. He's a, uh, he, everything he does, he comes hard, he comes fast. But I mean, I said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I'm sure Sean Strickland's talked shit on me about it. I'm not the most aggressive sparring partner. Like if I'm just training, like I still see the need for it anymore. I've been budgeting myself and others for like 15 years now in MMA. I don't need the extra brain damage if I don't have anything coming up. So, you know, there's a lot of guys who will get ahead of me in sparring, but it's sparring. I'm not really worried about winning sparring. Does Sean Strickland call you, uh, I don't know, maybe like the P word or something? Like, come on, Chris, I need more from you. Oh, you know, I, we, I have any video of me sparring. There's usually, if it, this motherfucker will be in a cage, I'm, 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 I'm the other cage from watching me <laughs> spar like a pair of push they get up i'm like bro you are fighting right now like what are you doing so yes like it, it's it's a very never-ending like cycle with sean about me not killing my sparring partners uh how do you feel about the fight your performance great win great finish i want to ask you specifically about the final sequence in a moment but just the the overall body of work uh i feel fine man it, it was it, it was good like i this is going to sound the most like weird thing to say. I don't know if I should say it, but for me, like it was, I'm happy with the, I'm happy with the outcome, happy with the performance. We did everything we said we we're going to do. The fight kind of went how we saw it going. Like we kind of thought it would go, but going into it, man, like, you know, we, Rocky and I had talked about getting like fight of the year. I was excited because I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking there's going to be this, like, 
knock down, drag out war of attrition. We're going to leave like bloody and beat up. And that wasn't it. And I was just like, oh, it's, I'm happy to win. But like, he had this weird feeling to where like I wanted more. What? You got the win, you got the finish. Well, you want to be ble- like you you want to be all busted open on a Monday? Why? I want it, I've been searching for that fight since I started fighting and I still haven't gotten it. And I'm just like, ah, uh, so close. And I thought that would be it. Cause like, you know, he's a warrior, man. He came to fight. This is one of those things. I wanted to do one of those fights where like I really felt in danger. Like I wanted to be that fight where I'm like, shoot, I think I'm in danger. Like, I don't know. I'm gonna have to dig deep and like, you know. I, I got into fighting because of like fucking cartoons and video games. I think my skewed, I have a weird perception of like what the fuck I'm doing in here anyway. But, <laughs> you know, I, I was, I was really hoping for that. So like, I'm sad that didn't come to pass, but you know, I got out with my health and a nice paychecks. So I'll take it. I would say like, you know, I, I wouldn't tell a lot of people to copy the Floyd Mayweather approach to fighting, but you know, you have longevity when you don't get busted open and beat up. This is probably a thing that you should celebrate and not lament. No, you're you're, enti- you're entirely correct. Like you know, anytime you can walk out of a fight with no damage, uh, I mean, I, I didn't take any damage at all, honestly. No damage. You got a good check, a good bonus. Everything's fine. Live for another day. I should be ecstatic, but I'm just like, I just, I was really expecting that like cartoon level of yeah. battle, and like, I don't know, like, I'm glad we got out unhurt and everything, but like, I woke up today, like. Ne- maybe next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about the finish though? Because I felt like you knocked him out two or three times. Are you wondering what's going on? Holy sh- dude! Like, I was so I've, I haven't watched the actual fight yet, but I've seen the finish like a thousand times. So when he goes down, like I saw him bounce, and I was like, "Oh, I think he's hurt." And then Herzog kind of moved forward, and I was like, "Maybe he's stopping it." And then Herzog stops. So I follow him down. I land some shots, and I see him go limp. And I'm like, "It's done." Herzog moves a little bit more. I stop. Herzog stops. So I hit him again, and he wakes up. So now I'm like, oh, shit, he's awake. So I hit him again, and he goes to sleep. And now, like, I think we're all confused. At one point, I hit him, he woke up. He's looking at me. I'm looking at Herzog. Herzog's looking at him. And we're all just like, what the fuck's going on right now? So it was a, there was a weird, like, six seconds to where we all got confused about what was going on. But, uh, you know, it, it happens. Did you or he say anything to you after the fight? No, no, I told him, uh, I told him after the fight, I saw him uh, walking back from the dock and I told him, you know, he's a, he's a fucking warrior and uh, nothing but respect, but uh, I hadn't really talked, we hadn't really talked after the fight. He was kind of doing his own thing and, uh, you know, yeah, lick your wounds a little bit. So yeah, nothing, nothing, but uh, I just said beforehand, man, like that's one of those fights, win, lose or draw. Like I knew he was going to come out to fight. So I wasn't, you know, I would be okay with the outcome. And no matter how that fight went, because I knew he was coming to fight. I got no issue. Like everybody hates losing, but I have no issue getting my ass kicked. Man, you ain't getting your ass kicked very much these days. I think that's now nine of ten, right? Since the the retire- yeah, nine nine of my last ten, yeah. How do you explain this, Chris? I remember when you were tired. I remember the chicken and waffles situation at PFL. Like, how do you explain what you're enjoying? You are now on a roll. You're beating top guys. You're getting big finishes. You're a fan favorite. Like, how do you explain all of this? Uh, man. Well, first of all, like it's one. It's what happens when you put all of your eggs in one basket, and you're like, man, there was no plan B. Plan B was uh, reinforcing plan A. So I kind of like, what do I do if I walk away from fighting? And on top of that, man, you know, it's uh, I had a lot of good people around uh, behind me, and uh, I happened to kind of just fall into, you know, I, I moved to Stream Couture. And I found the coaches in the gym. They've kind of like made me better at fighting. They they made me a better fighter overall. And this is the first time I can say, it, man, like I'm in like a truly a world class gym, world class coaches, and world class training partners. And even at in my 30s, man, it, I, I started. I grew fast. I still had room to grow. I'm still growing now. I'm still learning. I'm getting better every day. I'm getting better at fixing uh things I thought I was good at. So I'm just in the right place with the right people and I get to do what I love. So like, why the hell not, man? I love training. I love fighting. Uh, I'm, I'm serious, man. You won't find too many people who love fight with more than I do. So like, why not? I'm healthy. I'm still relatively young, 35 years, like middle age there. I still, still got a few years in me. Why not enjoy it, man? Like, why not kick ass, keep going as far as we can go? And then uh, I have full stories to tell when I'm old, officially old. 
Sean's fighting Jared, Jared Cannonier this weekend. I'm just curious. You keep winning one day. They call you up, you versus Sean. Do you take that fight? Sean would scream at me if I said no. Okay. We're I... fucking talking about cover and get paid. Like, no, like, you put you put the right dollar sign. Sean would be like, you're going to go fight right now. I'll be a pussy. Like, no. So if it came down to it, but right about the money, he would assault me. And the man tried to assault me for free. So if you put like, uh... a, a big dollar sign behind it, he would get, like, he would force me into it for sure. He's probably not next. I'm just curious. In your opinion, do you have you know a couple days later? What do you, what do you want? When? Where? Who? Uh, you know what? Just from what like the just from even this weekend and everything going on in middle ways, I would be surprised if it's not like uh, was it Drikus Upesi? Yeah, supposed to be supposed to fight once uh, before this weekend. We're ranked one apart, I think. Uh, he gets they should get a little bump, top ten maybe. But I'm now I'll be like what fourteen, so. I'm surprised if, if that doesn't happen. Uh, I think it's a really fun fight still. It sucked. It got canceled before because I got hurt, but I think it's still a really fun fight. Like, Drinkus is just, he's a fucking unit, man. Like, that's, that's a that's an athletic South African man right there. Yeah, what a performance. So, yeah, I, I'd be shocked if that wasn't it, man. If, if it is it, I would love to get a main event on a fight night car. I want a five-round fight with him. I think that'd be crazy. Wow, that would be something. Uh, amazing for us. Drickus is up next. I think he's even listening in right now, so uh, we can get his immediate thoughts. Yeah, that's all I've heard is like, when are you going to fight Drickus again? Like, you guys, you and Drickus, like, I'd be surprised that wasn't it. Uh, you know, he's got some options, though. But I, it's, I would be shocked if they don't give him a top 10 spot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it could be whatever, but uh, I think it'd be the most fun, man. Like, meet him for five rounds. I can love that dude. He's a really cool dude. He's a freaking soldier. I think that'd be a hell of a fight. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Happy for you, man. Uh, welcome back to the winning side of things. Great fight. Tremendous fight. Tremendous finish. And uh, I'm happy to hear that you're going to take uh, some time off. On Twitter, I will say, remains to be seen. Not sure if I believe you, but cool. It's a good sentiment. Hey. And I would also say you're beloved on Twitter, too. So just interact with the ones that like you and not the ones that are trying to rile you up. Yeah, I, I, have, I have since learned the uh, joys of the block button. Yes. And like, I don't argue. I'm just like block and move on with my life. Yes. You know, it, 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 it made Twitter much more uh, in, enjoyable again. But now people come on and say shit. I don't even argue. I just block and go on. There's a lot of cool people on Twitter. Uh, I get a lot of like fun messages. I got some really fun interactions. I love talking to people. So I'll, uh, you know, we, we, won't, we won't torture ourselves anymore. We'll, we'll hang out with those who are good people and uh, screw everybody else, man. Great advice. Thank you, Chris. Congrats on the win. Thanks for having me back on. I'll talk to you later. All right, there he is, Chris Curtis. What a lovely guy. Huge win for him.